Okay. Welcome everybody to Winter Film Awards final night of our Filmmaker Education Week. Um, just some basic housekeeping here. We have um, questions and answers down. If you click at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you can ask all the questions you'd like and we will address them over the course of the talk. Um, I'm Stephanie Finn. I'm Executive Director of Winter Film Awards. We are uh, our, our 10th annual festival has been postponed to September 23rd to October 2nd. So we will be winter in autumn this year, which will be really nice because we won't be loading the theater in the snow for a change, which will be very nice. Um, you can check out winterfilmawards.com for all of our events and for the upcoming festival. Also, if you are in New York City, we have a party this Saturday at Culture Labs, Long Island City, just an outside fun summer film networking party so that we can, you know, get back into seeing people in public. Yay. Yes. Uh, so that would be really fun. Check out our website, check out our social. So for tonight, we have our session on very important how to create a successful film festival strategy and a PR strategy. We've seen from festival organizers, this is really hard for filmmakers to figure out um, how to market your film, what you have to create when you're making your film, and then how to go about getting your film into festivals. So tonight we have Dr. Rebecca Louisa Smith, the film festival doctor who knows everything you could need to know about how to do this and can offer all sorts of advice for you. So I will turn it over. Welcome, Rebecca. Uh, you can introduce Patricia as well. And I am going to turn off me and switch over to you. Fabulous. Thank you so much for uh, the kind introduction. So just um, to welcome you all to today's session. Uh, as Stephanie said, my name is Rebecca Louisa Smith, and I'm the CEO and company of a company called The Film Festival Doctor. And we have a very special guest today in our seminar. I'll be talking, first of all, about uh, film festival strategy. And at the end, we're going to be talking about how to integrate PR into your strategy. We'll be having a Q&A with the very uh, lovely and one and only Patricia Shika of Shika PR. So Patricia, hi, welcome. Hi, hello everybody. I'm here to support Rebecca and answer any questions uh, you may have. <laughs> Thank you. So let's um, get the presentation up. Here we go. So let me do the slideshow. Um, start from the beginning would probably be best. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the front page. This, by the way, is my email. So by all means, feel free to reach out to me anytime. And also available on Instagram, which is at Rebecca Film DR. So I'll start first of all by just doing a bit more of an intro to my company and how we work and how we can help filmmakers. Then I'll talk more about why film festivals are actually important for your film and for you as filmmakers. Then I'll talk about the all important film festival strategy checklist that I never leave my, by my side in my bag. But this is for you for free, by the way. Uh, we'll go through that, the kind of key things to do to create the right type of festival strategy for your film and what you must think about and do in the, in the right order. Then I'm going to do a bit more of a spotlight on just one aspect of it, which I'll go through in detail, which is evaluation. So that's the most important thing before you do any submissions, before you start running around submitting to festivals. The key thing to really do first and foremost and needs a lot more care and attention is evaluation. Then we'll have the Q&A about how to integrate PR into your strategy with Ms. Shika, who we just saw. Okay, so let's begin. So with questions, you can just shout them out anytime after I've finished anything and I'll ask you if you wanna ask anything, um, then please feel free, don't be shy to ask us, we're here to help and to clarify anything that needs clarifying. So what is the point of a film festival? People do ask me that and say, why should I submit my film to festivals? Well, the first thing is, key thing is, is that they are all fantastic platforms to raise awareness of, especially a short film director's vision, so a calling card, and also first time features as well. But predominantly, when you go to a short film festival, you're, they're showcasing up and coming talent that have the potential and have the knowledge and have the talent to make feature films. So it is like raising your presence and raising awareness of you and your brand. They're also brilliant platforms for film directors to receive theatrical screenings for their film. Now, obviously during the uh, pandemic, 
it's been online, but now we're coming out of it and festivals actually began going back to live events as early as July last year. Certain countries did because they had the pandemic under control. Other countries didn't, but a lot of them didn't, so a lot was online. But now we're seeing the hybrid format, which is partly online, partly live. And some festivals are going completely live. So they all, they all vary. Um, but generally, when you see, when you go to festival, from like nowadays onwards, end of the year, it'll be pretty much a live event. And that's a really good place to get your film seen on a big screen in a cinema that instead of having it on a small iPhone 12, for example. So also what you do, what some people, uh, filmmakers do is when they have a, a feature film that might not be the easiest sell to get a theatrical release in their home territory or whatever, um, what they tend to do is use the festival circuit as an alternative distribution platform. So they get the film screened theatrically around the world, but for a lot less cheaper, different audience and different engagement, and might even get awards. They're also an amazing platform to discover independent feature films and short films. So festivals are all about discovery. So when a talent manager is at a short film festival, they look for new talent and discover new talent to, to potentially sign up. Uh, when film directors are there, they want to collaborate with new producers that know what they're doing and can produce really well a great short film. Uh, for example, a composer might meet their best film director when they see a film that needs help with the score. Or an actor might bomb really well the director that he knows exactly how to direct him. There's all sorts of things um, that can happen at a festival, but predominantly the backbone is discovering films they never see in a big mainstream cinema like AMC or whatever. Um, it's all about the festival circuit, which is where the home of indie gems live. Also, which Sheikha will talk about later on, is that festivals are great platforms to generate PR, that being you know, press reviews, interviews, bloggers coming there. Um, so it is very important, as we'll talk about, is it's, you must get a publicist to help you with this because you need to know the right people, you need to know the right strategy. It's not just like, you know, chuck over some emails left, right, and send it to get some results. It doesn't work that way, as Sheikha will explain. But it is important that if you want to get exposure for your film at festivals and also in the press, you need a separate person on board who is a publicist. Also, what, some, what also festivals can do, mainly for feature films, by the way, in shorts, is to get picked up by a sales agent. So sales agents are people who obviously sell films. And what they do is sometimes they go to festivals to find films that are those undiscovered gems I described earlier that do not have anybody selling them and they need to get sold. They can do that job for them. They normally find these films at something like um, Torino, Dinard, these festivals, which are you know, sales agent friendly and distributor friendly and have very good quality films that are quite sellable. So, you know, that can happen. It's not really a case now where people get the signed contract there and then in the festival. It's more a case of meeting the right people to form and build the right kind of relationship with. Also what festivals offer is to take part in a post-screening Q&A. Um, these are really good because that way you present yourself and you present your brand and your company and, and your vision. You talk about it in a Q&A during a post-film festival screening. And then people will always ask you at the very last question, so what's next? And that's where you get a chance to, well, not, you know, plug, but, you know, say what you're doing next and people want to collaborate with you that they can talk to you at the festival. So they're very useful things. That way you can generate good leads, great networking, and also present yourself and be yourself to talk about your film. Be prepared to get questioned about it, prepared to get um, asked about it in a way that might not be what you expect. So it might be a nervy process, but remember to be yourself and just really stand true to your vision and your film. So speaking now of the best parts of festivals, obviously winning awards. Uh, I've actually helped my clients win over a thousand awards and secured one Oscar nomination for a short film. And awards are great at festivals because it doesn't matter if it's a small festival or a big festival, you won that award, you deserved that award, and that's great. And also what festivals offer is some festivals which are BAFTA and Oscar qualifying uh, can certainly help you be a stepping stone to be nominated for BAFTA or Oscar. So for example, in the UK, we have obviously the BAFTAs, um, that's equivalent to the Oscars. And if your film gets selected in a BAFTA qualifying festival, you can then submit for consideration for the BAFTAs, for short this is. Um, if it gets into two BAFTA recognized festivals, you can also submit. If you win a certain level and type of award, 
at an Oscar qualifying film festival, that means you can then submit to the Oscars. So it's very like, you know, a lot of fine tuning in this. It's not just every festival is the same, every festival is different. So it does require reading T's and C's, um, but they can help you as stepping stones uh, to get nominated. Shock, that film I meant that I was nominated, won the Best of Fest Award at Holly Shorts. The Silent Child, who are colleagues of mine, who I spoke with in the beginning of their process, um, they won an award at Rhode Island that was the top prize that got them nominated because they were able to submit. So it is a very important stepping stone. There are a lot of value to them festival awards, uh, not just for Oscars and BAFTA nominations, but also for filmmakers' profile, helping get the film sold. There's many angles, so it's important that you do submit to festivals that have those awards if you want to win that level of level and level and tier award. Oh, obviously, always great networking. When I say the most beneficial festivals, there are sometimes festivals which are predominantly for the locals. So like the local audiences that might not necessarily be filmmakers, more like the local community. And they have to screen certain types of films to fit their tastes. But there are festivals which are heavy, like what we call filmmaker festivals, loads of filmmakers, South by Southwest, Austin, Sundance, you know, it's all filmmakers. They're also public, but there's loads of filmmakers, Cannes, Berlin, the whole lot. Um, so you can do lots of networking there. Sometimes you do great networking at like small boutique festivals. It just all depends. Um, but it is very cool um, to meet people I haven't met before from other countries that you could collaborate with. And this also works online. It has worked online, just differently during the pandemic. But even in that organic, natural process, it's quite a fun experience. That's where I met Shika uh, at a film festival. And also a short film has quite a long life to it, more than a feature. A feature norm tends to be shorter because they want fresh, you know, like each year new films, festivals that are feature films to put to launch. And also so they might come on board and sell it and then restrict them up amount of festivals, so on and so forth. But a short can certainly travel far and wide the circuit for like probably up to two years, 18 months, two years. We've got a short that's doing almost two years. Um, some shorts they haven't got a big enough budget to do that, but, but they can travel far and wide because they have more longevity. So you can certainly stay on the circuit for more than just 12 months with a short film. So any questions before I go on about these key points? Any questions? Shall we carry on? Okay, no, I think that, okay, so I'll carry on. So any questions that pop up, just put in the chat, um, but I hope that's important and, but sorry, that's uh, clear with regards to um, how festivals can help you in your film. So, the checklist. So here is the checklist here. You can download this um, on my website. I'll give you the details at the end. This is free. It's free for you um, for you to refer to. Have it on your phone, even print it out if you want to, like I am. Um, basically what this checklist um, is, it's a step-by-step -step guide with regards to the film festival submission process written and obviously done by me. If you want, you can follow me here on Instagram, just there, and you can then get the um, checklist uh, just through direct message. So. It starts here and goes round. And I'm gonna go bit by bit each one to make that clear to you um, what each point means and why it's important to do this in this order before doing any rushing into any submissions blindly. We're gonna go in more detail about this point because this point is, people miss this point sometimes because they're rushing to submit with deadlines coming up and wanna get the film seen and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's a very, very important point not to skim over. So this is, it goes in a little circle like this, nice and pink and uh, purple, like that. So let's begin here. Now, evaluation is very important because it's um, the first step of the process and you need to know if you have a film that festivals want. So people come to me sometimes and say, right, we finished the film, so let's get into festivals. I'm like, well, hang on, do you have a film that festivals want? Let's just go backwards, let's unpick the film. And they go, well, I presume so, because it's a short film. Might not be. So it's important that you really get feedback that's objective from other people who are not family, friends, boyfriend, fiance, God knows what else, okay? It's really important that you get objective feedback on your film from people who are not emotionally attached to you and the film. Someone like me who comes in with a fresh pair of eyes who can really give you that feedback. As I say, we'll go into more detail about that later, but what the key thing is with valuation is to figure out have you got a film that will appeal to film festivals and what kind of festivals. So that's the basic info there, but we'll go through that 
in more detail just after I've gone through the first part of it. So what you must do before doing any submissions as well, so once you've figured out, have I got a film that festivals want? Can I get it seen in festivals? What kind of festivals can I get it into? Is to start preparing. Before doing submissions, you start preparing. So the key thing to do is to set your film festival goals. So what do you want to achieve from the festival circuit with your film? That is the key thing to ask yourself. I've made the film, so why did I make it? And how do I want festivals to help me? Those are the key things to really go through. And that will then shape your strategy. So for example, say you think, think right, this film, we've made this film for a reason. It's a short film that we want to get on the circuit and be a serious contender for the Oscars. So obviously it's important, first of all, to make sure you've got a film that the as kind of festivals are going to want and also the Academy would want. Um, but you think, right, okay, I made this. I'm very focused on this goal. So that's what I want to do. So that's a good goal to have in mind. And that way you'll then prepare your strategy to encompass all those key kind of festivals um, that will help you try and get that prize that will get you um, access to submit to the Academy, the Oscars. So it's very important that you're clear. If your goal is right, okay, we've made the film. It is what it is. We want to get it out there. We want to network and we want to just get it seen. We can win, we win some kind of awards, whatever they are, fine. That's also really three really good goals there. So your goals are networking, connecting with other filmmakers. Second goal is winning awards. And the third is exposure. So if you're not emotionally attached to it and like, okay, well, it is what it is. The film might not win an Oscar, but it's certainly got some value in it. And then we're moving on to the next film, but let's, you know, let's get it out there and achieve what we want to achieve. Okay. So you must always set your goals. What is your why? Why have you made this? What do you want to get from the festival circuit? And how can you help each other? How can you help festivals? And how can festivals help you? You help festivals by giving them the right film they want, and they help you by giving that big platform of exposure, access to more filmmakers, to new audiences, to new fans, to Q and A's, and to press opportunities and distribution opportunities. So it's a big filter. Next part of preparation is to plan your budgets. Now, when I say budgets, there's more than one. There is the obvious one, which is your film festival submission budget. That is the money you put aside to spend on um, submission fees and but someone like me potentially helping you as a strategist. And also what that includes is money for, sorry, the second budget, sorry, is money for materials, so your deliverables. So that would encompass getting a trailer made, getting a poster made, getting an SRT file made, getting a DCP, that's a, um, a file, a hard drive to screen the film in the theatre, um, a DCP called a DCP, and also getting a press kit made, and other things might be certain types of, you know, you might want to get certain um, stills in certain resolutions that might cost extra, um, different poster. So you need to put money aside for that, which can probably, probably do all that maybe with a thousand, one thousand, two thousand dollars max probably, because DCPs aren't cheap, but it's all about getting the right deals, but you have to have money for those to be made, otherwise you couldn't get it screened. And all festivals now require for short films and feature films, poster and a trailer. Even if it's a short short, it's important to have that for, to help them promote the film at the festival and for you to help promote it yourself at the festival on your social media. So that's this, the two budgets. The third budget is the one that does go and recognize, which is your traveling budget. So it's very important if you want, if your goal, one of your goals is to network at festivals, you have to get there, obviously. You can do things online. You know, there is an online supplement nowadays because of the changing scape of the festivals. But if you want to be there physically in person, like I'll be tomorrow at the Oak Cliff Film Festival here in, um, in Dallas, Texas, then it's important that you have money aside to travel. So if you're going to be traveling from the States to, let's say, Dallas, then that will be quite economical. If you're going to be traveling from Mexico to the UK, then that's going to be $100,000. So there's going to be variations in price. How far can you travel? How, how far can you travel? How much money have you got to travel around the world? Is it going to be local? Is it going to be worldwide? Also, what comes into that equation with a traveling uh, budget is not just money for traveling, but also accommodation, living, getting around, and obviously every country and city is different. So if you go to South Africa, it'll be quite cheap. If you go to New York, it'll be extortionate. So you have to really think about, can I afford to live in this area for like a week, 10 days or whatever? Um, will it affect my bank balance? Will I be able to manage it? What can I do with it? 
So really think far and wide how far you can travel, how important it is for you to travel um, so that can that budget can be um, uh, maximised. You might also have to buy accreditation. Some festivals can give you free tickets for your screening and maybe a discounted rate on a badge. Not all of them can. It depends on the festival. But don't assume they can. So, But they also can probably help with partner hotels for a discount maybe. It's just very important that you do your research and think about how much this will cost to get around. I was at Tribeca Film Festival a few weeks ago, and that was bizarre because the cost of an Uber was extortionate. So I just walked, and as much as I could, I just did a long walk just to, to get there. <laughs> um, because it was just silly spending, you know, $30, $40 each time I pop on a five-minute ride. But that's New York's prices. So that's your three budgets. Submission fee budget for me, for your submission fees to spend at festivals. And also your second budget is materials budget. And your third budget is your traveling budget. Any questions so far on this part of the checklist? Oh yes, I think we have one pop up. A list of BAFTA Oscar Prize will be helpful. Yes, in fact, I can help you with that, no problem. So if you go onto Google, your best friend Google, and type in BAFTA qualifying film festivals, a PDF will come up of the whole list from the British Council of Film. If you type in Oscar qualifying film festivals into our good friend Google, a PDF will pop up saying uh, Oscar qualifying festivals, and there'll be a big list of them there. That's always for short films, and it's very comprehensive and very up to date. They're very good resources because they're always updated regularly. Okay. There was Ooh. one more question, which I gave the beginning of an answer, but the question was, can you submit to festivals outside of your country? And as a festival organizer, I say definitely yes, because festivals love having films from around the world. But from a strategy perspective, yeah, <laughs> you think? Absolutely. absolutely. No, I do. I mean, pretty much all festivals um, without, unless they say otherwise, accept films from over the world. So any festival that says, you know, um, the uh, British International Film Festival means they're having films not just from Britain, but from all over the world. So yes, that is very important to do that. Um, there are some festivals that just stick to their own territories, but they do say that in those regulations. Um, but yes, all festivals, like 95%, welcome films from all over the world because they want to see more talent. They want to see, um, they want to, obviously they're a festival that, that celebrates worldwide filmmaking, not just local. Okay, so I agree definitely with that on Stephanie. You're well convinced. Okay, so let me go on to the next part. So preparation. So there's three parts of preparation, which is preparing your, whoops, sorry, hang on. Um, preparing your materials. Hang on, this is gone, sorry. Um, sorry, my mouse was clicking. So preparing your deliverables. So as I mentioned, there's trailer posts to DCP. Um, these are crucial things. A lot of festivals, not all festivals will require a DCP, but some of them will. And those always will request DCP when you are having your film screened in the theater. So the Valley Film Festival in LA, it's a great festival. They screen in Lemley, NoHo 7. And the issue is they have to ensure they ask their filmmakers that you have a DCP because they can't screen anything else because it's a big theater that doesn't do um, file uploads on Dropbox because of the quality. So it is important that you do have those materials and you put money aside in the beginning to um, uh, pay for those materials. Now also, step four of preparing is creating a film freeware account other platforms. You'll find that when you submit your film to festivals, pretty much almost every festival nowadays is on Film Freeway. It's, it's a great platform, it's very straightforward, it's very user-friendly, and you know it has a few issues here and there with behind the scenes, but for filmmakers, it's very easy to do process. It took over without a box back in the day because that tried to catch up, but it wasn't, wasn't working. But Film Freeway just smacked, knocked it out of the park and, and smashed it. Um, so that account, it, really important to get that account set up um, because you need to, you need to have, definitely have a Film Freeway account to submit to festivals. There are other platforms that you might be required to submit your film to festivals, which is Fest Home. And Film Festival Life, I believe, is just about to wrap. It's not going to be around for very long, but I think it's still in the background. Real Port's just gone. And I think that's kind of the, oh, and Short Film Depot, the short films. Clement Ferrand is on that one, a big film festival in France, shorts. But predominantly, pretty much everything's on Film Freeway. You'll find that some festivals use no platforms. Big ones like South by Southwest use their website. 
they don't do anything on those platforms so they don't want to pay commission for the fees that they get to, they have to charge so some festivals you might not find on film freeway so if you can't find it on film freeway google again your friend google and it'll come up so if someone like south by don't because as i say they like to do it on their own system uh, but tiff has moved over to film freeway so is sundance um, so all of them pretty much all the big ones are on there most of them it's just a small fraction that are on other platforms or their own website but do create one and make sure uh obviously with the step behind materials make sure that you do have um those key things trailer poster synopsis director's statement and bio and headshots and stills because you'll need them for your film freeway page and it's important to have a comprehensive film freeway profile to show to the programmers that you're serious about your film you have all what they need and it's thorough okay questions on these so far before i move on to the last two anything popped up Okay, I think that's, yeah, okay, I'll move on. Anything you need to shout? So this part, I have to say, is not gonna take you five minutes. And that's where you really need to hire me. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, that's not a plug there. But this part will take a bit of time. Because once you know, if you've got a film that festivals want in phase one, you know what you want to achieve, you've got the money set aside, you've prepared all your materials, you've got your film freeway page ready. You then got to research, plan and create your festival strategy spreadsheet. I like things in spreadsheets, but you don't have to do spreadsheets if you don't want to, you can do tables, but you have to research which festivals. So the key thing you've got to think about when researching festivals is this, is think, right, okay, I've got a really good horror film. It's directed by a black woman and it's very groundbreaking and it's very well made. So this potentially could go to all of the higher end genre film festivals. And because the narrative is very unique and can speak to a more broader mainstream audience that aren't just focused upon genre, it can actually appeal to a more mainstream audience, then I think I can submit to bigger festivals that are not genre specific. I also can submit to black film festivals because I'm a black film filmmaker and I'm female, so also women's festivals as well. So there's four angles you can unpick. So unpack the film, but know in the beginning that you've got a film that would be good for festivals. If it's a really good short, but it's not the top tier, don't submit to top tier because you'll end up wasting this part of your um, budgets with submission fees. Um, it's very important that you submit as early as possible. Now, this massive myth that goes around where people say, um, if, if I submit late, then I won't be able to get the film screened in, um, in a big festival because if I submit late, it won't get watched. It's more a case of if you submit late, you're going, to, you're going to spend a lot of money on festival fees. So you could be spending, you know, 50 to $100 if you submit very late to big festivals especially. So it's always a good idea for the money, for the budgetary purpose, to submit as early as possible to as many festivals as possible. Um, that way you get in the system early, you've done the hard work, you've put it in, in, in there, you've submitted it, it's all done, it's all dusted, you've not spent a fortune and you've kept your submission fee budget to a minimum. So it's not a case of it won't get watched. It's more than likely a case that it will get seen. But when there's other films coming in earlier and they've got other things to think about with their, with their creating the program, it could be tough. And also number of submissions as well, you know, that sometimes festivals always get a lot of last minutes does happen or get seen, but just becomes tougher and tougher. And just help your budget by doing it early as possible. OK, so it's very important that this takes a um, bit of time. If you rush it, you could then end up missing things or going to the wrong festivals. So it's very important that you do your research carefully and create your, create your strategy very carefully. So that's what I do when we work on films. We always unpack the film. We look at its strengths, we look at the niches, and then we think of the best homes for it based upon our knowledge of the festival's audiences, the festival's themes and programs, and personal program and taste. You can find those answers yourself if you take the time on their websites, looking at their previous programs, looking at the previous award winners, looking at festival feedback from audiences, it's really crucial. And then this part is also very important because when you've done the research, you then submit, as I said before, just get in the system and you've done it. You have to then wait for the results to come in, which will take a bit of time and then monitor the strategy. So this is a, a, a very uh, patient process, let's say. 
It's not going to be a quick overnight process by any means. Um, you don't get a result. You don't submit and the next day get a result. It doesn't work that way. It's a slow burner. So to be honest, you probably get results maybe like two months, three months after you've started to submitting. Some festivals will tell you on the day of their, of their notification date. Some will tell you earlier. Some will not tell you at all. Some will tell you after the festival if you've not got in. They all vary. So when they say the notification date is a certain date, it's not gospel. It's an indication that they might you might find out on that date. OK, um, so it's very important that when the results come in, you might get in the beginning a few no's and then you might get some yeses. It all varies, um, but don't worry too much. If you get loads of no's from like big festivals, then incorporate into the strategy smaller ones, not maybe tiny, but ones of a different level and tier, still reputable if it's a really good film, but have, might have more of a chance of being selected because it's not as a huge amount of submissions and a volume of submissions. So it's very important that you do monitor it carefully, like each week and see what comes in, what no's have come in and what yeses have come in. And it, you know, are more festivals in certain territories taking it? Are more, say, genre festivals taking it if it's, if it's a genre film? Are more women's festivals taking it? Are they not? You know, so it's very important that you do tightly monitor what's going on. So you can then really analyze and, and really get an indication of who's taking the film. If you find you get more, say, horror festivals than you do general festivals that are not horror specific, then just keep submitting to more to get more of um, exposure and more um, chances of getting into more festivals. So it's very important to be very micromanagement a little bit. That helps. Um, Vince, got a question. DCP is created by the filmmakers. Is that created out? Um, DCP is created by the filmmakers. Some festivals might be able to help with that, but they would charge a fee. So it's probably easier just to say, right, here's a DCP and get it um, created by yourself at a post house uh, before you send it to the festival. Okay. Um, I'd also like to add as a festival organizer that DCPs, um, it is possible to create your own DCP. There is software and websites to tell you how to do it. They're usually bad. Like, yeah. so you can, for, this is something that you should have a professional do and make sure that you have a solid DCP that you could share because otherwise it, 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 it's, there's certain things you don't want to cut corners on and your DCP is definitely one of them. Exactly, exactly, yeah. that's exactly. Oh my God, it so is. Because I mean, it'll look bad when you project it in the yeah. theater if it's done poorly. So that again is a key thing to, to not uh, cut corners on, as Stephanie said. Yes, it's like getting good brakes on your car. Like there's certain things exactly. you want to economize <laughs> on and that's one of them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the next part here, I'm just gonna quickly go through evaluation a bit more. Um, oh, seems to have, um, I'm on next page. How about we just go out again and see if I can come back. Okay, so just as sometimes it likes to freeze. Um, okay. So, um, so like I said before, I mentioned about evaluation. So once again, to recap, before doing any planning, creating your strategy and any physical submissions, you must evaluate, get objective feedback on your film. Ask yourself and ask other people, do I have a film which festivals want? And the reason why is because um, you need to know if you've got a film for festivals and if you haven't, you can then maybe tweak things before you maybe finish it completely if, it, if it's in picture lock but it must get feedback that is not from the family, friends, and so on, and us because it probably won't. So uh, Stephanie will be able to help me here as well, but what are festivals looking for? So what they tend to want, the big ones especially, um, are, fe are features and short films that are innovative, groundbreaking, and original narratives. So what they don't want is the cliched, predictable, we can guess the dialogue next, we can guess what's going to happen next, we can guess what's going to happen at the end everyone's going to be all right you know we don't want any boy meets girl boy gets the girl back they get married that's boring they've seen it millions of times before in a big theater they look for things that are different they want stuff that has got a strong execution that is fresh unique one-of-a-kind vision and they can see and hear the director's voice I'm not i'm not saying reinvent the wheel i'm saying more a case of um just do something that is creative spin on a cliche that we've the season before and make it your own work. So you can, we can see the vision, we can see the aggressive vision, we can see what you're doing with the story and you've pulled it off. That's what they want. It all starts with the narrative. 
which is why it's important to kind of panel this in the beginning before making the film so you know we've got a festival screenplay in your hands. Oh, good sound. Good sound is crucial. I hate bad sound. When I was festival programming, I hated it. <laughs> but it is important that the sound is professional. Uh, again, these films do not have to be made for millions. It doesn't have, don't worry about the budget. What matters is the quality. So you can make a film on a small budget with a good team. That's mean to make sure you get the right people and the good person to always get on board before, after DOP probably is, is, is a sound recordist and sound and sound team. What they also look for is a well-written script with strong dialogue. Having a film with boring, predictable dialogue is not for the big festival. Smaller ones could probably see maybe strength in the story if it's interesting, but if the dialogue's not good, it won't get into big festivals because it'll be obvious when, obviously, when the um, actors are projecting uh, the words. Strong acting performances is crucial. Having bad acting can drag the film down. I'm sure you're aware of this. Um, but it has to be solid acting and strong performances. And also production values, like I say, it hasn't got to be made for millions, but as long as you get a team who are really professional and very strong and very good at what they do, that's all that matters. Um, and that way you can then have a film that might look like it's made for millions, but it's made for maybe 200K or something like that. You know, So make sure you have a very strong team around you. And also make sure that it's a very good running time what you don't want is a long, long short film that needs to be 50 minutes when it's half an hour. So make sure that you have a script that is strong to the point, does what it needs to do. If it needs to be half an hour, then make sure the script justifies why it's half an hour and deserves to be that length and it can't be shorter. And also with a feature, we don't want a two and a half hour epic. It doesn't need to be an epic and it's not an epic narrative. So ensure that you have a good editor to really kill the darlings and rein the story in to be punchy and have that emotional punch we expect to see. So for research, these are two amazing films that you can watch um, that are typical festival films. This film is brilliant, it's called Beat uh, by a British actor called Ben Wishel stars in it. And it's available for free to watch on Vimeo. So you can just type it in Vimeo and look them up. And it's a brilliant film um, and it looks at mental health very differently to what you'd expect to see. And his performance makes the film. Uh, you haven't got to like, hire him every time for a film, but it shows why you need to make sure that you have good actors and a good team around you to make a film like this work. And this won an Oscar, Skin. Fantastic film, obviously it's about race, but an amazing performance is from the team. It looks stunning and a very, very strong story with a you know flawless execution. So these are really good for, for researching. Um, so before I go on to Shika, I'm gonna answer William's question. And do you suggest using your own money in producing a film or should I re rely on raising funds on internet platforms like YouTube or others? Um, well, I, I wouldn't put all of your money into making a film. Maybe, maybe do a piecemeal approach where you put some of your own funds in it, but also raise some on crowdfunding and maybe even short film schemes that might be available, local film council, you know, look elsewhere and, and don't put too much in your own. Look for investors that could be private investors that want to use investing in films for tax relief. Look at all your options and not put all your money in. Okay. So that's a little bit of homework to watch those two films. That one's free to watch. Not sure if that one is, but I think it's available maybe somewhere. because It's got a sales agent, but this one, have a look on that, just type in, I'm going to Vimeo, type in beat, then we're sure, and it'll pop up in the film, the whole 10 minute film is on there. So this brings us on to, this is stuck again, so excuse me, Chica, uh, Q&A with Miss Chica. So um, I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation that it's very important um, to integrate PR and strategy. And I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, the festivals can generate PR. But for to, do, to, do, to, to do that, you need to have a publicist that can actually make that happen. And that person I recommend is Patricia Shika Oshikar PR. Thank so you. Shika, please tell us, first of all, why is PR important for a film when on the festival circuit? Well, thank you. What a great presentation. I'm learning even more things with you <laughs> every time you speak, uh, Rebecca. So why is PR important? because it goes hand in hand together with a festival strategy. So if you have a phenomenal film 
in a great festival, but no one hears about it, it's almost like you're, you have a wasted opportunity to raise your career, your profile, your credibility and bring exposure to your work. So when, especially for short filmmakers and even features, but things are different in, in those two strategies. So let's say you have a short film and you're using this film as a calling card to perhaps finance your feature film or just bring some articles, uh, film reviews and interviews to raise your credibility or perhaps you just want to win awards or prove uh, that you can direct a film so you get hired uh, for a, a television episode or to direct other work. It's important that people know about it to bring awareness around your work and a publicist can really accelerate that process for you. So it's, it's very important to have a budget for a festival strategy, but also for PR, because together, when Rebecca and I work on a film with a filmmaker, we just expand the possibilities and also accelerate the process. This is where you are right now. Today, you have this wonderful film and you have your intentions. And this is when your film premieres at the festival. It could be in a month, in six months or a year. And then working with people like us, bzz, we bring it closer to today because yeah. we know the shortcuts, we know how to strategize, we have those connections and we can help you really get the results you want. So uh, working with a publicist, should I go and just give them a, a ballpark of what it takes? That was my next question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yes. so, so uh, let's take a case study. We have a film, Rebecca sends me a client and she says, I just got my filmmaker with this film into this big festival for their world premiere. This is the best time, or even before, the sooner you get a publicist on board, the better results you will get because you will have a strategy from the moment you start production and start bringing the awareness and planting the seeds. But most of the time people don't think about a publicist while they're filming or in post-production. So they will start hiring a publicist when it's like, oh my God, I just got selected into Sundance or Tribeca or whatever. And people panic, what should I do now? Hire a publicist. So the sooner is the better because publicists need time to strategize, to evaluate your film and also to create that award-winning strategy to get you on every outlet to have interviews everywhere, film reviews everywhere, et cetera. So what you need to do uh, first, and I'm gonna just uh, read my notes so I don't forget any steps because it, it's really uh, an order of things to do. So once you start working with a publicist, trust your publicist. It's important that you have that trust in their knowledge, their expertise, their connections, because that's how you will better navigate. And sometimes we will fulfill your intentions, but we need to go to explore other parts of the strategy that you're not aware of so we can get you where you wanna go. So having that evaluation of your film from a publicity perspective, also what assets do you have? Like Rebecca was saying, how important it is to have a poster, to have a trailer, to have behind the scenes. Publicists will need those visual elements to promote you and promote the film. So just gathering all those elements, we guide you through the process. And then we start uh, discussing with uh, Rebecca where is the film premiering and what's coming after that film premiere? And sometimes we don't have all the answers straight away, but there's an intention and a strategy, a plan of execution that has to be uh, already written down somewhere, thought about it. And then we can start uh, uh, navigating that process and also thinking already ahead in advance what your release strategy will be and your award strategy. So 
the first thing that I do with my clients is to listen to them. What are their intentions? What do you want to do with this film? Once I've seen it, I've evaluated from my own perspective as a publicist, I want to listen to what they have to say. Uh, people have different intentions and we can have the same film with different directors and each director, each producer, each client has different uh, intentions. And I'll give you some examples of intentions you might have. Uh, raise my credibility, uh, get exposure for the project, get exposure for my, my work and bring awareness around my skills, my work, my ability to direct or to produce or to act, whatever that is. Uh, I want to generate sales and distribution. I want to get my money back. So it could be a financial incentive. Uh, some other people say, I just want to network. Uh, some others uh, want to get their O-1 visa, a US visa. If we have any foreign um, people listening here, uh, their main incentive could be, I need to get press so I can generate my green card on my, my US working visa. So it's a different strategy. Then uh, they want to get an Oscar qualification uh, from uh, the Academy. That's also a strategy that publicists have to work along with uh, Rebecca, a film festival strategist. And some others, they just want to become famous. I've heard people, I just want to be famous. <laughs> Make me famous. All right, we'll, we'll work on that intention. So whatever that is, we have to craft exactly and customize your strategy for you to achieve those goals and surpass them. That's very important for me that we always surpass your goals. And then once we have uh, clarified your intentions, we, uh, I will start asking questions to you about what is your message? What is your brand? What angles can we develop and exploit with this particular film and with you as an artist, as the client, because it's two different things, the film and the filmmaker. So we, we find the perfect message, the perfect brand to make it an irresistible pitch for the press, the journalists, the reporters. And uh, without having all that information, uh, it, it's uh, we go there blindly, right? So there's research. We need time to do that research to really uh, do a Q and A with you to have those those discussions and to evaluate also the market where we are. PR, public publicity, and press has shifted since the pandemic started, and every week, every month, it keeps changing and evolving. So we are aware as publicists of what's going on, what the outlets, the journalists, the trades are looking for, what is possible, what is challenging. I don't like to say the word impossible because if there is one journalist out there who will champion your film or your career, I'm going to go and find, find him or her. So uh, that's how I roll with uh, the clients. So, and then we start I start evaluating all those assets and the intentions and the discussions and I start crafting your strategy by targeting the right media for it. And there's an order that we have to follow as well uh, in uh, how to target, what to say, what to offer, what, it, what is an exclusive and how to get the exclusive. What do we need to get it? When do we get it? All of those questions are being answered. And then it's important to reach out and keep the momentum going. PR is not a one-shot deal because then you will get, you will go high and then die the next day uh, in terms of exposure and awareness. You have to keep the momentum, keep people talking about you, whether that is on the trades, the media, the magazines, uh, print, radio, podcast, social media, whatever platform there exist, we will find a way to keep that momentum and, and that conversation going. So our goal is to plant seeds and those seeds might take a while to blossom because if we sent a short film to uh, the Hollywood Report or Variety, one of the big trades, they're not going to talk about it. They don't 
cover short films unless you get that Oscar nomination, right? Or you are on that short list or you win a big award at Sundance. Then we will have already planted the seeds months before. So when they see your name and we're, we're ready to pitch you with the right strategy, they will already know who you are because they keep track of everything. They notice that, you know, but we have to keep that conversation going behind the scenes. And it doesn't mean you're gonna be out there being published, but it doesn't mean the conversation is not evolving offline in the back channels. Well, we have just and, a question, sorry, just a question come in from Courtney Reed. She's asked, yes. just behind the scenes images or videos. So, so important and make sure they are 4K. Even HD is not, uh, it's not the standard anymore, 4K. Uh, high resolution photos, make sure you have a professional photographer and a professional videographer, because those elements become gold. We hang on to them for publicity. And I have seen clients not get the maximum potential I could have gotten them just because they forgot to take photos of behind the scene moments. And I have a document that I share with my clients, what behind the scenes documents do and elements do I need? Well, we list them for you and we give you the sizes, the formats, vertical, horizontal, what type of action do we wanna see? Who should be on that photo? Which combinations of photos do we need? So that's something we provide to our clients once we start working with them. But it's so important behind the scenes is really what can uh, get you or not that exclusive write up. Uh, so yeah, and my last thing I want to say is PR. Uh, patience is a virtue and it's currency in PR because you have to let it go, be detached from the outcome and just surrender to the process and wait, wait for somebody to bite. And once it bites and it's out there, it's like a vortex starting, you know, yep. it goes really fast. So that's so my pitch. Spot on. And you can see here um, how important it is that they, they obviously they're very complementary with each other at festivals um, and also publicity at festivals, but it's patience of virtue. So it's not, again, it's not right. You send the press release overnight, boom, you've got the Hollywood Reporter. It's not so it's a festival next day, you've got Sundance. It is a slow burner because you have to like, you know, get people's interest and then start talking about it and then watch it. And then this takes a you know two-month window minimum, or could even sometimes be more. It's also important, to, as you say here, is you have to plan this ahead. So in my submission strategy che uh, checklist, just say we'll go in here in the materials bit. Uh, she'll be in budget two for your materials. So you have people, you know, like getting a publicist to help you get your press kit sorted to do the publicity for you. You know, it's very important. And also, just a, uh, it's, it's important to plan this, um, obviously integrate PR into, into your strategy for a short film and a feature film, isn't it? Not just features. Yeah. Yeah, for features is a different uh, game because uh, features usually they want their money back. They have bigger budgets. Uh, there's more at stake, they have financiers, and people want to have that commercial sale release, they want to have distribution. Uh, it, it's a different strategy. Uh, it could be the same depending on the goals, but I would say it involves for publicists to be at markets, to be making those introductions with sales agents, distribution companies, buyers, uh, platforms, outlets, etc. So even um, the, the press becomes even more important for a feature to start from the moment you uh, trigger the green light. So you can make the announcement that an, an attachment of an actor has been made and you're going into production next week or you just wrapped the, photo the principal photography or you just uh, got picked up by this big distribution company etc. So that's how it works. You absolutely need a publicist to succeed and get all the results that you want. Absolutely. So Courtney just asked, thanks. Does the film need to be in 4K as well? Um, yes. 
pretty much that would really help and having the best sound on it too uh, that's it's a, it is by exhibition uh, seeing it on vimeo for festivals as a screener is a bit different um but for 4k projection in, in the theater that's going to help you a lot well, I, know. I wanted to uh oh excuse me i have a question for you so as a festival organizer <laughs> <laughs> um, if your film is in a festival, how uh, and what can you be doing to promote your screening? Because in a lot of cases, the festival is promoting the festival. Um, so what can you be doing to help out the festival to make sure they have the information they need? And what can you be doing to promote your own screening? That's a great question, Stephanie. And it, it was the, my next topic, how publicists collaborate with film festivals. Usually film festivals have a communications person or a, a press office or depending on how big or, or small they are, but there's always somebody in the festival team who deals with press or exposure or publicity, right? So the publicist, as soon as you know that you got accepted before we, they even announce publicly the selection, publicists are already connected with that person at the festival to make sure that you will be highlighted in all their press material for the festival. So you will be one of the highlights of the festival. We negotiate all that. We also make sure to facilitate the work of to the festival. So we already have the press kit, all the elements ready to go on a silver plate here. This is our little package, our little Dropbox link. You have everything there in every format, every size, every possible uh, element that the festival might need when they are in a rush and the journalist calls the festival and say, can you send me your top three shorts? or your best uh, BIPOC movie at the festival, and they already click, have all the elements sent to the journalists. So we facilitate that. We hit them from every angle, and we are constantly collaborating also so you are, have the best spots on the red carpet. So your cast and crew can have the step and repeat, and we have time to invite journalists and reporters to come and interview you, take your photo. We collaborate with the Getty Images or whoever official photographer is there from the festival team and make sure you're everywhere because if we have to create a buzz. We have to make it stand out amongst all the selections that there is at the festival. So that's what we do. That's why we don't exactly. speak much. <laughs> exactly, that's what it is. And it's important for filmmakers to, you know, show up for their screenings, obviously, to promote it. But before that, it's very important to get up, engage the, the, um, the audiences. So on social media, obviously, Instagram, Instagram lives, Instagram stories, posts, uh, call to actions, you know, swipe up to book tickets. And just to keep relevant, stay relevant, keep it out there, keep talking about it is really crucial, um, you know, and getting people to see it. And also doing the good old fashioned emails. So emailing your contacts who you met previously at festivals or know through other people and they, they're they in the area, they live in the area locally in New York and want to see the film, then, you know, give them a, a free ticket to watch it. So these all count towards helping the festival and I was promoting the film and getting a really good audience. It's so important and what publicists can help you do, we already have a huge contact list. And I'll yep. give you an example. I had a, a, a client who was premiering their film. It was for the uh, hearing impaired. So they had all those uh, subtitles for, for people to watch a horror movie without the sound they couldn't hear. And I sent the invitation to all the deaf co community of Los Angeles so they could come and support the film, but also to all the sales agents, distribution companies, investors, and uh, decision makers from LA from my personal contact list to invite them and give them free tickets because they wanted to generate sales and distribution. So my client, that was one of their intentions and their goals. And they said, that's very important for us, even more than getting a review on a blog. I, we want to have people sitting in the theater, watching the film and possibly generate a distribution from it. And we succeeded. We invited a few people and those who couldn't attend that particular night, we send them the, the link and we, you know, keep following up. 
after the screening and they got incredible distribution. So it was very successful. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's the magic of it. So just to recap at the end, um, this uh, checklist I went through earlier, you can download this for free on my website, which I'll put in the chat in a minute. And for those of you who want to learn more about my services, in a nutshell, what we do is we help you create a successful film festival strategy for your film to get it seen in the right festivals around the world and win awards. So you come to me with a problem, which is I want to get film to festivals. Where do I start? What do I do? We solve all those problems and get results. And then we bring Shika on board to get you the best PR to really rise above the surface and get you seen. So any final questions, please shout them out in the chat and we will answer them. Any questions? I'm going to put in the same time my website and you can then get your free checklist or you can message me on Instagram and I'll ping it over to you. So that's the website. I think, I think that's all the questions. Um, yeah. Well, it has been amazing this evening to speak with you all. And thank you so much, Stephanie, for this opportunity. It's been really fun just to get our knowledge out there and to help you just get your film seen in festivals. All right, hold on, wait, my video's coming on. There we go. All right, thank you so much. So we've been working with, Winter Film Awards has been working with Rebecca for probably, I don't know, eight of our 10 years anyway. And every year we we always get some great films from you. So it's so awesome. And Thank you. Thank you so much for celebrating <laughs> our films and schemas, winning all those awards last year and in a fire. That was, the, I think it weren't you, the last festival in NYC to go live before the lockdown, the first lockdown. Yes, we were, we were pretty much the last, the last one. The, wow. the weekend after us was everything started shutting down. Wow. Uh, we were, we were wow. super lucky. Yeah, um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know, I know. And so, yeah, so we'll be back in September this year, which will be really fun with, I think, two films from you this year. Yes, yes. three, I think, actually. Three? Um, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Yay. See, <laughs> Film Festival Doctor helps you get your films into festivals. <laughs> yes. For sure. That's the plan. Yay. All right. So if nobody has any questions, then we are wrapping up. So thank you, everybody. And again, if you're in New York, we have a party this weekend on Saturday. Um, this uh, session has been recorded and I will be posting it on our various sites so you can check it out. And thank you so much, Rebecca. And thank you, Patricia. It's been a joy to have you guys. Thank um, you. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Have a great night, everybody. Have fun. Hey, Bye. thank you. Take care. Check thank out Winterfell.com. Ah. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. <laughs>